Hi, Gay DeRusso with the Majestic Rider here today to talk to you about gated horses and stumbling, tripping, or falling down. The gated horse is supposed to be a sure-footed horse, and most people would compare that to the quarter horse. The quarter horse has a short stride and can really get underneath itself when it goes down hills or gets in uh, rough terrain and can balance itself pretty well. The gated horse moves differently than the quarter horse, and some of them have a very long stride, such as the Tennessee walking horse, compared to the shorter stride, which would be more like a Rocky Mountain horse. The um, things that come into play that can possibly make your horse stumble, so first is stride. If they have a big overstride and they're reaching way up with their back legs, Sometimes they'll step on their front feet and that will cause them to stumble. Some of the horses do not have the best conformation and they um, cross their legs over each other when they're walking um, or they interfere uh, with the front legs and that can also cause them to stumble. So one is to look at your horse's conformation and watch how your horse is walking. When you're looking at how he walks without anybody on him, uh, you can videotape it too if it helps, if you can't figure it out, but you want to make sure your horse is landing on his heel first and then on his toe. If he's landing toe first and then heel, there's usually a soundness problem going on with his feet or with his lower legs. And to help him with the stumbling or tripping, you'd want to work this up and figure that out. The overall uh, conformation of the horse comes into play too. So besides their um, interfering, if their legs are crooked, they can be hitting each other. Um, if they have a very long back, that can also make it hard for them to get underneath themselves as well as a big overstride to actually support themselves and keep themselves off of the, off their front end. When shoeing your horse, if the uh, farrier is not listening with you or has the wrong angles on the horse, that can also make them prone to tripping. So you always want to check your horse's feet. Uh, the farrier can help you if you find out it, the correct angles and the toes aren't too long. They can always put a rocker shoe on the horse. They can roll the toe. If it's really bad, they could put a square shoe on or a nat natural balance shoe. Um, to help that horse break over and get his feet out of the way. Uh, another thing that can cause the uh, horse to trip is his attention span. If the horse is lazy or just does not pay attention, uh, they're not going to pay attention to the footing. They're looking all over the place as you're riding down the trail. They're more than likely going to catch their toe onto something. So when you're riding your horse, especially if the terrain is rocky or very uneven, you want to make sure that you have that horse's attention and he's focused in he's focused on where he's going and not looking all around. If the horse is being lazy, that can also cause them to trip. As horses travel, they carry most of the weight on their front end. And that's why you'll see a lot of um, professional riders always uh, trying to bring the horse's weight onto his back end and to in, have the horse engaged. If the horse's weight is all on its front end and he trips, he's most likely going to fall all the way down on his knees. But if you're keeping the horse collected and paying attention as you're going down hard terrain or going downhill, and you have the weight on his back legs, um, if he tends to trip, he'll be able to catch himself much faster uh, than if all the weight was on the front end. Vision comes into play. Uh, we don't have a eye chart for the horse for him to tell us which letters he can see and how blurry they are. Uh, but a horse that does not have good vision cannot judge the footing. They need both uh, vision in both eyes to help them with the depth of the uh, footing. If it gets really difficult, you'll see a lot of horses want to put their head down to check it out or when they're looking at water, they want to put their head down. That's because they can see better when their head gets closer to it. Um, so if the horse has bad vision, that can also cause a problem. Your tack, if your tack does not fit that horse correctly, especially your saddle and it's pinching the horse's back or causing it pain, that can also cause it to trip. So you want to make sure you have a saddle fitter 
check your horse and make sure that it's carrying you um, correctly with your weight and it's fitting the horse correctly. If your horse is fatigued and tired, he is going to be more likely to trip. It's just like if you went hiking and on the way back, you were very tired, you're not gonna pick your feet up as high to get over the rocks and it's much easier to stumble when you're tired. And when you're tired, you also do not catch yourself as fast. So if you're uh, riding that horse at gait too much and he's not recovering and getting his energy back, that could also make him trippier. Lazy horses tend to trip a lot more than hot horses. The lazy horse is not making an effort to pick up his feet and a lot of times he's not paying attention, he's just out to lunch. This also happens a lot when you're riding in a group. The horse that's up front uh, leading the pack usually is not trippy because he's paying attention to where he's going and he's alert and um, awake and, and uh, looking out for things to come. The horses that are following head to tail a lot of times we'll get up on that horse in front of them and start not paying attention. They're just kind of staring at that horse's tail and following them down the trail. The thing that also happens, they get so close they can't see the footing. And so if that horse up in the front steps over a rock and you're right on top of that horse, um, when the rock gets up to your horse, he a lot of times won't see it and will catch his foot and actually trip on that rock. So make sure if you're riding in groups, you're keeping your horses a couple lengths apart, uh, that you're keeping your horses awake, give them little jobs to do, stop, back up, maybe do a little turn or a leg yield and make sure they are staying awake. Uh, pacey horses tend to be more trippy than um, horses that are more square going or more on the trotty side. The trottier side horses will usually pick their feet up higher. A lot of the gated horses uh, seem to be bred now with more pace or a harder pace in them. So to help those horses go more towards square going or more towards trotty um, to help so they're not so um, lateral, it's helpful to use poles in the arena and get that horse to pay attention and pick up his feet. And it'll also help to square up his gait, which will make it more comfortable. If you think when a horse paces, as you watch them, the same sides of their body kind of move together like this, like right, you know, front leg and right hind leg and the left front leg and the left hind leg. So as it trips, if it trips on the right and it's got to swing both the other legs together to catch himself, it's much harder than a horse that's more on the trotty side or more on the diagonal side. So teaching a pacey horse to trot or correcting its gait uh, usually will help a lot on the tripping. Uh, the rider can make a big difference. If you're too big for your horse, that can make him more trippy. It's harder for him to carry him. If you're not balanced in the saddle, if you're either leaning to the left or right or your stirrups are uneven, if you keep falling forward on the horse, that can make them trip. If you're um, too large for the horse and he trips and your weight goes forward, a lot of times you will just knock that horse over and he will fall onto his knees. Or if you kind of lean to the side, he might fall onto his side. They will usually try not to hurt you. Thank God they do that. Um, the good ones will try not to roll on you or anything. But again, if you're too big and you're unbalanced and not keeping that horse collected and paying attention, they will tend to trip more. You'll see, um, a big rider on a small horse is a lot more trippy than a big horse with a small rider. So make sure you get a horse that fits your size or lose some weight or make sure that you are riding very balanced. Uh, keep the horses collected, keep them paying attention. You can ride them on looser reins, but you want to um, make sure they are staying awake and every once in a while collect them, get them back on their back and again. So hopefully this will help some of you uh, help your horses so they're not so um, trippy. Let me see. Um, other reasons your horse can um, trip are things that are out of our control. So if, um, if you have tried many things and the horse is not improving, of course, talk to your vet. Some x-rays uh, would be very helpful to see if the horse has arthritis in its front feet, if it has navicular, uh, side bone or ring bone or something that might be uh, giving it some pain could cause it to trip. If the horse has been nerved in the past, uh, that can cause it to trip because it can't feel its feet. Um, 
and you might have to check with a vet to have them evaluate if you don't know the horse and you got it from somebody else. Um, if the horse has arthritis and its hocks or its hocks or uh, bones are fused, that could cause it pain and that could cause also another reason it could trip. So you might need x-rays of, it, of its hocks as well. Check the footing in the arena. Uh, there's many arenas that are uneven. People don't keep them up. You're supposed to maintain your arenas every year. They usually need uh, leveling and they usually need uh, some fresh footing because the footing breaks down. A lot of barns can't afford to do this, so a lot of barns will have uneven footing. Our uh, gated horses, a lot of them will then tend to uh, drag their feet over the ground. So what happens with uneven footing is they catch their foot and they will stumble and that can cause them to fall down. That's not actually their fault. It's kind of like you tripping, you know, you're going down the sidewalk and part of the sidewalk is sticking up and you don't see it and you catch your foot over it and you go flying forward, except you don't have anybody on your back that then falls forward and knocks you over. So if the footing is uneven, that can make a horse stumble, trip, or it can make it fall all the way down to its knees. Uh, if that horse tries to catch itself, make any effort to catch itself, um, then it, it's usually something like that. If the horse is falling down all the time and the footing is not uneven, then of course it could have a neurological problem. Uh, it could have come down with a virus this is, if this is something new. Again, check their footing, have the vet check them, they can check them for EPM. Um, but uh, you know, do a full evaluation. And I always tell people, write down when the horse is stumbling, when it falls, and what were you doing, what happened. Um, sometimes people curse themselves. They say, my horse never trips, and what do you know, the next day they trip. So if you say that, knock on wood. I might be superstitious, but I've seen it happen a lot where people have a nice shorted, uh, gated horse, and uh, the horse then trips and falls. The next day they say something like that. Footing. The other thing that happens with the footing is if the footing is very deep, uh, you know, there's lots of sand in the arena, it gets kicked around. What happens is there's usually pockets where the horse's foot is going way down. And then if the footing got too deep because the sand is pushed around, they have to lift their foot up like six inches to get up over that footing. And if it's uneven in the arena, they don't know, like now I'm supposed to lift my foot up six inches because this is deep, but over there I only have to lift it two inches. So if your horse is tripping in the arena, see, is it in the same spot every time? Um, if I have a horse that trips or falls bad, I always get off and I check the footing and I can tell you, 99% of the time I find that the footing is uneven and or there's a bump in the footing and that's where they're catching themselves. We had uh, one arena, had a lot of gated clients, so um, some of the girls were having problems with their horses tripping. And I said to them, is it at letter E because there's letters around our arena? And they said, yeah, how do you know? And I said, because there's a bump over there. I got off and walked because I had a horse trip. So all the horses were tripping over there. So when we had the uh, arena redone, uh, we made sure that it was level there and then uh, none of the horses tripped there anymore. So check your footing, be aware of what's going on, do a full evaluation, get your vet involved, get your farrier involved, get your saddle fitter involved, and usually you will figure out the problem. Um, if it's a lazy horse and you're not an aggressive rider, you might have to get a horse with a little bit more energy that pays a little bit more attention to their feet. Because if you're a lazy rider and that's a lazy horse, uh, you're not going to help each other. You're in the end probably just going to hurt each other and something bad will happen. Please remember more things. So um, I put it in my other video, but... Um, I forgot to mention sleep deprivation. So if your horse is not getting enough sleep, he's going to be tired. He's not going to be as aware. Um, kind of like when you're not, uh, you don't get enough sleep. You're kind of out of it a little bit. So if your horse has sleep deprivation, he's not resting well enough um, because of stress or some other situation, that can also cause them to be trippier as well because they're... Um, as you say, it half asleep when they're um, going down the trail. So um, also think of that, make sure your horse is sleeping well. I hope that uh, helps everyone uh, to figure out what you, why your horse is 
uh, tripping and uh, until next time.